Hello all you lovely wonderful people of Audacious and beyond wherever you're tuning in listening and watching from and reading in fact uh, it's great to have you with us um, it's such a good thing to do at the beginning of your day or having your lunch or even just before you go to bed and you just need a bit of calm and just to invite the presence of God into your day uh, wherever and however that looks for you so great decision great thing to be doing and um, welcome. Uh, my name is Hannah, I'm part of the media team at Audacious Church. I've been in Audacious for about 12-ish years and um, I have a little energetic toddler, two-year-old boy and I'm married to the lovely Owen so that's just a little bit about me. Um, you know, uh, I've been thinking a lot lately about neighbours. I moved house recently to the other side of Manchester from uh, Salford, not far from our central campus, all the way over to um, the other side of Stockport. Shout out the Stockport crew. And um, we, we've done some renovations and some building work, which invites a lot of discussion and opinion and uh, also you know just moving house generally gives you chance to really get to know new people you're leaving people behind you're meeting new people and so um my mum and my brother have also moved recently and it's just on my mind a lot it's on my heart a lot the um the concept the whole idea of your neighbors and the people that you live you know that you're butting up against um we have invited people around we are currently caring for an elderly couple across the road and we've been on the receiving end of some not very nice <laughs> behavior um and you know we've also been on the receiving end of gifts of loaves of bread and bags of apples and presents for our son and hand-me-downs and all sorts of things and it's it's this you can't choose your neighbours and it's this thing that in, impacts us all. We all have these relationships in our lives and God has something specific to say about that. Um, there's a lot of talk about neighbours in the Bible um, and um, in the context of the Bible and what God calls us to do, we do often think of that Jewish lawyer um, asking Jesus when he talks about the parable of the... Um, the Good Samaritan. And the Jewish lawyer says to Jesus, well, who is my neighbour? And um, and we know, don't we, that Jesus goes on to say, you know, it's, it's anyone, it's it's whoever your, your, is in your, your sphere, in your life, in your world. Um, it's the, the Greek is to be near somebody. For the, the Greek, um, you know, vocabulary used in, in the original text means to be near to somebody. And Yes, Jesus is obviously right, but I'm just going to rein that in slightly and say today, this week, as we approach the season of Christmas, as we approach Advent, um, I just want us to just give an extra little focus on our actual neighbours. They may be in your street, in your um, halls of residence, in your flats, in your apartment, in your, you know, in your close Maybe you live on a big country road and you don't have any neighbours for miles, but there are people near you. And uh, I just want you to call those people to mind as we as we sort of discuss and think today. Um, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, in my in the house we've just left, um, we were in a semi detached house and my I used to constantly think that my head, my pillow, it was it was a sort of new build and the houses were identical and my pillow was sort of less than a metre away from my neighbour's pillow for seven years, you know, just sleeping in that close proximity and, and to not have a relationship with that person, you know, a, a, you know, a, friend, a friendly relationship with that person or to get to know them, um, to me, would, would be crazy. And I think that, um, yeah, well, I just want to pay some attention to those people in our lives. So um, as I look out of the window right now, I'm looking at directly into the house of the person who, shall we say, likes us maybe the least on the street. But I know enough about their life. I know that it's tough. I know that there are uh, reasons for 
maybe that hostility. And I can see beyond that hostility, God has given us the ability to look through um, the words maybe that are, co- that are intended to cause us a little bit of harm. You know, God gives us the ability to see, to, to ask the right questions, to do the right things, to extend a hand of, of help and care and see beyond people's, um, you know, maybe, maybe you've got some neighbours who are actually just really nice to you, but you actually just don't know them that well. And they're covering something up or, um, you just don't know your neighbours cause you've never bothered to get to know them. Um, you know, I'm looking out at these houses out of the window here and I can, it's, it's nighttime, but the lights are on and there are stories and hearts, children of God behind every single window there. Um, you know, some of them older than me, but they're still God's children and they're our brothers and our sisters. Um, and I know that there are, there are things going on. Um, and you know, God calls us to love our neighbor. It's something even non-Christians quote quite regularly, don't they? Love thy neighbor, love your neighbor. It's, it's a, a common Bible passage, uh, but the bit that sticks out to me in that command, you know, Jesus um, in Mark, he recalls the command from Deuteronomy, um, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, your soul, your strength. And then in Leviticus, love thy neighbour as thyself, love you know your fellow man as you do yourself. But in Mark, Jesus pulls those two commandments together and he says they are equal. He says that loving your neighbour is equal to loving God. And yes, he's talking about your your fellow man, the people around you. But in this context today of taking that word neighbour literally, God is saying love your neighbour as much as you love God. And for some of us, that's just stepping up and loving them a bit more, paying them a bit more attention. For some of us, that's, you know, I've lived next to this <laughs> this challenging person for years and years and years and you know um, I was having a conversation with my mum just the other day about how Christmas is this time this season you know we sometimes complain about how long the Christmas season goes on for but it's actually this window of opportunity where heaven just cracks open slightly people's hearts are softened um, they're more I don't know willing to engage with us um to engage with those around them people are just there's something in the atmosphere there's something in the air where people are just more open and um and there's a warmth to people at christmas despite the loneliness despite financial problems despite family feuds there is a this is a you know i use the word loosely but it's a magical season um and also um you know, I don't think we're called to be everyone's best friend. I think, you know, God's not saying, Jesus in that in that passage in Mark is not saying, you've got to go out and be best mates with everyone in your street. I think God is asking us to shower love on those who've been less than kind to us, to help elderly neighbours who we know cannot give us anything in return. You know, um, you can do it, you can do it. And you can bless those who curse you. You can make an extra portion of dinner um at the end of the day for for a lady who lives on her own you can send a christmas card to the guy who always parks over your drive um you know to the lad that cranks his music at 3 a.m and and wakes up your baby (laughs) you can invite the mum at the end of the street for a play date even though you've lived there for years and she's never invited you you know this is the season we're coming into a season now where if we just focus in on those people in our um in our world in our streets and in our flats and apartment blocks and whatever um you just don't know what god can do and um yeah so i ask you today in light of this command to love our neighbors as much as we love god with all our souls and our minds and our hearts and our strength um and to love our neighbors as ourselves. you know how can we practice hospitality this christmas how can we go a little bit further out of our way for somebody next to us how can me and my household, my family, create a safe space? Um, what can we do in our home to make it more inviting for people to come and spend some time with us to, to create a calm space for people who are in chaos? Um, you know, how can we meet their needs? What can we do? Um, of course, there's loads of opportunities in church to invite and to, you know, send, um, send leaflets and flyers and love your world events. And we do the big give find out more about all these things on our on our website and on Sundays but 
in addition to those church things, finding out the specific needs of those specific individuals that God's put on your heart. Um, I think we should just take some time to pray over the Christmas period and um, and get creative with our ideas of how we can show love to our neighbours. Um, so I'm just going to take some time to pray. Um, call to mind, maybe maybe go head over to your window um, to pray. Um, maybe even just stretch out your hand to the street and um, and let's just really uh, ask God to put people on our hearts, give us the right words to say and soften hearts over this Christmas period. Okay. God, we just thank you so much um, for your love, the love that you have so freely given to us that we can give out to others. God, we, we thank you for the people in our vicinity, in our street, in our neighbourhood. God, give us hearts to love those people, to see them as you see them. God, I pray that relationships that are fractured with neighbours would be restored, that you'd bring harmony to our, to our neighbourhoods, to our streets. God, I know that, um, you know, you don't call us to be everyone's best friend, but I pray, God, that for those people you're putting on our hearts, that you'd give us the right things to say. Holy Spirit, would you give us um, the names now of people who we need to just reach out to again, check in on them, see if they're OK, um, invite them round. God, just practical ways. We know that you're a practical God. And Jesus, your coming to earth at Christmas as a baby, growing up as a man, was all about showing us the practical ways we can demonstrate love to those around us. Uh, we thank you, God, for your um, your protection over our homes. We ask that you bless our homes, that you'd make our homes peaceful places to bring other people into, safe spaces, God. We love you, Lord, and we know that just as you know the number of hairs on our head, you care about the details of our lives. You also care about the details of the lives of all those people down the street out there. And we just pray for them now. We pray you bless them. We pray you bless their families. We pray you'd um, put the lonely in families, God. Thank you, Father, for your presence today. And we pray that you'd be with us for the rest of today. Amen. Thank you for listening. <laughs>